is here. Right here. Above. Back. Yeah. Slap it. <laughs> ah! Hello everyone, today we're here in Kamakura, just down south from Hase Station actually, on the beach side and we're shooting today entirely on the Xperia 1 Mark 5. I mean not like my vlog shots because that's on the Sony a7S 3 but um, yeah the intro was actually shot on the new S Cinetone for mobile and but we're gonna get to that in a moment. I say we because uh, we are here with Irina today. Oh, hi -yo. Oh, hi -yo. <laughs> and we're gonna shoot um, yeah just photos and videos today throughout the whole day covering a bright daylight as well as indoor and sunset and also nighttime and we're gonna be switching locations so I'm super excited to show you guys what this phone's capable of so by the end of this video I hope you can get a clear understanding of how the new Xperia 1 Mark 5 performs and also see how I work with the Xperia smartphone to utilize its features and capabilities to capture the best possible imagery. So enjoy the video, let's get going and start shooting. to Goryeo Shrine and the train tracks here are really nice so we're gonna be in this general area shooting the neighborhood but I'm gonna put you guys on POV so I don't have to deal with this talking headshot and changing cameras all the time but um yeah it's gonna be super fun uh, hopefully we get some nice photos it's midday but we have all these greenery and trees so it's gonna be pretty nice with the contrast between the shadows hopefully it turns out good uh, yeah there's good there's that's yeah Wait, put both feet like Healed, yeah. Okay, it looks cool. Like the green's nice. It's like harsh shadow, so maybe just like, yeah. Begin walk. Wow, the it's like the shutter speed is crazy. Thirty in one second. Thirty photos in one second. And most camera cameras don't even do that. Look this way. So the new Xperia 1 Mark V has three new lenses and it's the 60mm f2.2 24mm f1.9 and the 85mm to 125mm which is the f2.3 to 2.8 but the 24mm on this phone is the game changer here and the reason why I carry this everywhere now I used to use the Xperia Pro I because it had the 1 inch sensor this sensor actually is a bit different and the new image sensor is called Xmore T for mobile and it's in this new Xperia 1 Mark V and it uses a new two-layer transistor pixel technology. I sound like I know what I'm talking about but um, yeah I 
pretty much practice saying that, so that's why. But it actually is my favorite phone to use for photography and videography because of its sensor. And I don't think there's any other phone that can beat the quality of this 24 millimeter sensor on the Xperia 1 Mark 5. So in a nutshell, the sensor and the multi-shot processing allows for a better result in image quality and also a wide dynamic range as well as a noiseless clean image. And it also keeps its uh, skin tones really clean and accurate like with all any other Sony cameras, even the Alpha series. So yeah, it's not compromising anywhere. Say it again. <laughs> so we just made it to the garden house. We're gonna just grab some food and head inside. It's a bit shady and the lighting condition is a bit different than midday outside. So we're trying to see how the phone performs as well, but uh, we need some rest. So we're gonna head in and yeah, just enjoy this restaurant. Let's go. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> So we just got some food. She's very happy. <laughs> um, the place looks really nice. It's a bit in the shade, but um, I thought it would be a good place to kind of test out the creative look on the Xperia 1 Mark V because that's a new thing. And it's pretty much just a different look in your photos. Like you can choose what kind of uh, vibe or look you want straight out of camera pretty much. I don't know if I'll be using it because I really like the standard look on the Xperia. It's like really so realistic and the colors are so accurate but let me know what you guys think of it and if you guys will be interested in using it as well. All right, so just made it to Minato Mirai and we just took the gondola, which is crazy. It's in the middle of the city. I don't think I've seen a gondola in the middle of the city, um, especially in Japan. And yeah, let's now talk about video because we've been shooting a lot of photos. But for the video, we now have the new S Cinetone for mobile, which is pretty crazy because I use S Cinetone for all my videos, especially on the A7S3, which I'm recording right now with and using the S Cinetone on this camera. And on the FX3, I've been using S Cinetone. It's because it's just super accurate with the colors and just so easy to use, just how it is right off the bat. Or you can even color grade it if you need to. And it's so easy to color grade the footage. And now that you have that on this small device, it's a game changer. You can use this phone to vlog and take videos wherever you need to when you need a compact device and easily match it with your main alpha camera. So. That is a pro, so I've been using 120 FPS to record my videos because I really enjoy slowing down clips. It's a really easy way to make everything look cinematic. And with the new sensor on the 24 millimeter, you really can't go wrong. The autofocus is also pretty accurate. Uh, when I say pretty, it's never failed on me. You do not get to see the autofocus box when you're shooting in 120 FPS, but even then, it's still there, you just can't see it, and it's always accurate. I never have to double check the footage uh, to see if the things I'm um, shooting are in focus or not. And I don't think there's too much improvement in terms of autofocus compared to the One Mark IV, but that's because there is no room for improvement pretty much. I'm super happy with the autofocus. That is an update so far. If there's any issues or difference or if it's better, uh, I'll let you guys know. But um, so far, it's really good. But one thing to keep in note for the 120 FPS slow motion option is that the stabilization isn't activated. So if you're really running and shooting at 120 FPS, uh, the footage will be unfortunately shaky, but no other smartphone can shoot 120 FPS in such an amazing sensor. So I guess that's a trade-off, but just carry a gimbal and if you're not running, you can actually handheld and just stabilize it. But it's always so good to have a gimbal. So on the One Mark V, peaking and histogram has been applied. Especially peaking. Um, we did see histogram in the past, but peaking is super crucial when shooting some subject, walking, and you're tracking them like a slide shot for example and you have like a tree or an obstacle in front and you still want to keep focus on the subject while passing through those objects it'll usually hunt because there's something blocking the subject and it'll hunt back and forth if you're on autofocus but when you switch to manual previously there wasn't peaking so you couldn't easily check where the focus was but now it lets you know so it's super easy to get an accurate focus and reliable focus uh, on the manual setting, which is amazing. 
So one more thing that you probably guys already know by now, but the UI has changed. And now when you shoot vertical and horizontal, uh, the interface changes to match the shooting style. So whenever you're shooting anything that's vertical, then the interface will change automatically for you. That was a well needed uh, upgrade or update. All right, just made it to the passenger uh, terminal, which is the lookout of Yokohama. The wooden floors are really nice and aesthetic, and we have a blue sky. Breaks my heart, sleeping all alone, but I guess you're better. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you guys could take away a thing or two. I know it wasn't a full in-depth tech spec review, but um, this is just something I love doing, just going out and shooting on the new device. But other than that, I just ended the day shooting on the night function on the new Xperia 1 Mark V because that's a new thing. It's really nice because you don't have to kind of fiddle around with the settings and you can get a nice long exposure-ish photo at night. It's just something that's useful if you want to really quickly capture dark scenes and yeah, it was 800 ISO, but it turned out really nice. Another thing to note is that the One Mark 5 can also be a monitor for your alpha cameras. So I usually use the Ninja 5 for the monitors because on a big shoot, it's really nice to have a screen on top. Sometimes it's a lot of hassle to bring all those stuff. So it's good to have an option where my smartphone can also act as a monitor. But other than that, big thanks to Sony Xperia and also Irina for being in this video. She's such a positive and fun vibe to be around and it's always good times shooting with her and hanging out. So definitely go check her out if you haven't done so. Her page will be here somewhere. And um, if not, the link will be down in the description. And one last thing, let me know if you guys are going to make this your new everyday carry and upgrade or are you gonna keep your previous phone? And let me know what you guys currently use as well. I'm kinda curious to know but I think this is one of the biggest jumps I've seen in a long time in smartphone technology, if that's a word. But yeah, like always, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.